Hey guys, Kirk here and thank you for joining me on a new video on my channel. Before we get started I want to thank everyone who has subscribed and liked my videos. Uh, liking the videos really goes a long way with me and gives me a kick up the bum uh, to produce more videos for you guys to learn Unreal Engine. Uh, this is the second video in uh, my series, the new series, Build Worlds. In the previous video we created a landscape in Gaia. Uh, we exported a height map along with masks for our landscape to better texture it. And in this video we are going to import that height map and textures, um, textures, sorry, masks, uh, which we will implant into our landscape. As you can see on the time-lapse video, prior to this video being recorded, I have created a new project using the content examples pack. If you haven't got the content examples pack, it will be in the samples tab on the Epic Launcher. Uh, you'll see it there. And what I've done, I've just created a project, uh, renamed it to Build Worlds. And now I've come in here, I've created a new level and called it Build Worlds V1, as you can see in the outliner and at the top left here. I've also created a bit of folder structure uh, where I've created a new folder. It's just got important in there and it's got our save uh, level bit, if you like, our level there. And our folder has already been uh, added for the um, layer infos. Are they in there? No, they are not. Um, so yeah, and that's where we're up to here. Uh, so what I want to do now is import our height map and to do this we need to go to landscape or L shift 2 and as you can see it's just got our create new landscape we're not going to do that we're going to click import from file we need to enable edit layers uh, like so we don't yet have a material so we're going to leave that empty and we're just going to add our height map in here now. So we're going to click there, go to come to our height mask right here. If you're not on this screen, then navigate to where you, you have saved your height map. And then just press open. And I'm not sure if you can see it with YouTube compression, but the green outline for our landscape is here. But as I can see here, it's quite flat. So we do need to increase the Z offset. Uh, so to do that, we come to our scale part. Uh, I know it's going to need about 140, 130 will do, no 140, I'll do 40 just to be safe, uh, like so, and that's just going to increase the height of our landscape to give our mountains a bit more range if you like. Um, so now our actual height map is in our thing ready to be imported, we do need to make sure our numbers are correct. As you can see, our height map resolution is 1025 by 1025, but our overall re resolution is going to be 1072 by 1072. Uh, so our overall resolution is going to be larger, our landscape is going to be larger than our ha actual height texture. Uh, so around the edges you will get weird artifacts that happen, uh, which we don't want. Uh, so the best way to solve that is let Unreal Engine decide the best for your texture scale. So I'm going to copy this 1025 and I'm going to put it in our overall resolution and let Unreal decide what the best resolution is to have based on our height texture. So I'm going to put 1025, press enter and it's chose 1009 uh, which is fine, just means 1k. Then I'm going to 1025 and it's chose 1009 as well, which is brilliant. Um, so from here now, you need to keep this 1009 uh, in your mind, if you like. Uh, we will need that a bit later on, maybe in the next video actually. So don't worry about that, we can get that information in the detail panel anyway. So we can hit import. This should import our landscape. And as you can see, it has imported our landscape. Oh, well, before we continue, if you've imported it, uh, let me come back to select mode just to showcase this in case people are stuck. If I get my exponential height fog, you may have imported it and it's like that and you don't see your landscape. As you can see, I've moved my height fog up, my height fog up. So all you would need to do is click on your height fog and just move it down to where your landscape is. Like so. 
and then your landscape will become visible. Um, as you can see, it's not the best quality. There is some weird artifacts going on here, but we will sort them out later on. Um, but yeah, that's our landscape added. Uh, we're going to come back. There's still a few changes, you know, don't, don't run away too quick. We're going to come back to our landscape mode. Uh, we enabled edit layers because we do need that right now. I'll come to paint. Yeah. I'll go back to sculpt. Uh, what we're going to do is change the name of this. We're going to put this as landscape base. And what that means now is this landscape as it is now is locked in and it's there uh, as a permanent fixture. And what we need to do now is create a second layer on this landscape so we can edit it and change it uh, physically with our sculpting tools uh, later on in the series. So I'm going to right click and create, it's going to create based off that base layer. Uh, nothing will change, your performance won't dip uh, or anything like that. It's just adding a second layer onto the top. I'm going to click on it again and press F2 and I'm going to put landscape edit. Now, if we want to physically edit this uh, landscape, we can just select our landscape edit and physically edit the landscape. I'm not going to do it right now. Um, but basically the reason I've done this is because if we make changes to our landscape physically, what we don't like, we can just delete this layer and it will revert back to the landscape base in which it will look like this again. Um, but yeah, that's just a new layer. Uh, what we need to do is click back on base layer. This is very important for the next step. Uh, well, I say the next step a bit later on. Uh, very important. And um, we're going to come out of landscape mode. We have now got our landscape in here. We're going to hit save and we're going to save all. Like so. It doesn't look like it does something, but it really does. You could still click on the and save, whatever. Um, how should we do this? We are going to bring our masks in. So we're going to right click, create new folder. We're just going to call this masks. All right, so we're going to double click on this and we're going to right click and go to import. What we need to do now is import our uh, masks. So we're going to use the base layer, the detail mask, the flow mask and the slope mask and the snow cap mask. We may use this, we may not, don't know yet. Um, so I'm going to hit open. This is going to import all our masks. Um, oh wait there, I need to import my stacked mask as well, which is this one. If you've not got a stacked mask and you want to know how to create them in Gaia, go and check my previous video out. I showcase how to do that. We'll click open on there. Um, we do need to make some changes to these uh, now to enable Unreal Engine to read them as a mask. If you know how to do that, go right ahead and do it. Uh, for you who, who don't know how to do that, I'm going to do it with this one mask here, then I'm going to speed the video up for the rest. So if we double click on here, in the compression settings, it's a DXT1. We need to enable mask, no sRGB. Just select that and hit save. And that is it, that's all you have to do. Uh, I'm going to speed the video up for the rest now. Uh, if you want to do that. Okay, now that is done. What we need to do now is give our landscape a material with the layers in there in which we want to plant our masks onto. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry, it will do. Uh, so we're going to open our folder structure. Uh, we're going to right click and choose a material. I'm going to call this KM, my name and convention, and build worlds landscape. Like so, now we've got to right click on that and create a material instance. You don't need to apply it to your landscape just yet. You need to make some changes. Um, but like I say, we need to give our landscape some layers. Okay, so I'm going to double click on here. First thing we're going to do is change this to a use material attributes and the details panel here to the left we're going to right click and choose landscape layer blend which is right there we need the layer blend node 
Uh, so what masks do we have? So we have a base layer mask, detail mask, flow mask, slope mask, and a snow cap mask. Um, yeah, I'll add them all now. So we need base, slope, flow, detail, and snow. Base, slope, flow, detail, and snow. So we're going to go into here. You can leave them as weight blended. We just need to click this little plus icon. You should know this by now if you've been following me on my channel. Uh, so we're going to choose base layer. Close off, that should change now. Um, I'm going to open the next one and we're going to want slope. Yeah, I'll just leave it as slope because it'll say layer slope then. I'll change this from base layer just to base. Uh, what was next? Flow, was it? Flow. Like so, and the next one will be detail. So, and the next one is snow. Like so. Okay, and what we do now simply is add this into our material attributes and right now That is our layer setup. We do need to give uh, Some layer info, but we as you can see we're getting an error material attributes So we need to basically what I want to do in this video is just to give some color to our landscape um, So we can obviously see the difference in our masks uh, So to do this I'm going to set material attributes Right, so we're just going to add a base color input to our set material attributes. Sorry, we need five of them. We've got one, so we need four. One, two, three, four. All right, so and we're just going to wire these up into each of these. All right, so there is uh, multiple ways of adding masks to your landscape material. Um, I will showcase them throughout this series. Uh, well, we'll need to do that anyway. Um, but to get colours, we just need a vector 3. Um, I'm going to make these a parameter. So if you right click on the vector 3, oh, sorry, to get a vector 3, you should know this by now on my channel. Uh, so if you right click and try constant, you'll see it's there, constant vector 3. Sorry about that, my, my, my brain went blank. Uh, so, as you can see, we've got a vector 3 now. This enables us to choose color. If we right click and convert to parameter, and I'm going to call this base color. These are only temporary, it doesn't have to be permanent. And we need another four, so I'm going to duplicate these four times. And this one I am going to call. Oh, let me sort that. You'll see that weird stuff, it goes weird like that. And um, this is going to be our slope. So, and um, this one is going to be our flow color. Right, so, and um, this one is going to be our detail. Detail. And this is going to be our snow. Right, so. Okay, we just need to wire these into our base color inputs of these set material attribute nodes. Right, so. There we go, we're going to hit apply. So, I don't know why I've done that yet, I need to give these some colors. Okay, so our base color, I'm going to want a green for that. So I'm going to click one on the green. Uh, our slope. Our slope I am going to set a little bit brighter than maybe a bit darker than that. I'm going to have a greyish colour like this. Our flow, I want this to be bright yellow actually so we can clearly see our flow. Uh, our detail, I'm going to leave detail as black so we can clearly see that. I don't know, between grey and um, our snow, I'm just going to leave as white actually. Obviously it represents snow. Our detail colour I'm going to set as a blue. Like so. Okay, so that's our colour cell. Let's save that. Right, so we're going to click on our landscape. 
and we're going to add our material instance to our landscape so we've come back to build world get our material ins instance for our landscape and just drag that into the relevant slot there and we'll let this build it will be black because we have no layer information yet uh, a layer information communicates enables our material to communicate with the landscape efficiently um, so to sort this out we are going to come to landscape mode again i'll shift and two we'll come over to our uh, paint layer but before that make sure you still have landscape base set on and we're going to come onto our paint and let this build um, we're going to hit the plus icon we need to add our layer info we're going to hit the plus icon here weight blended layer and that folder it created before i'm going to save it into there that's one now the landscape should turn green i'm going to choose our slope and add our slope in there and we're going to choose our weight blended layer um weight yeah weight blended layer for our flow then our detailed layer and then our snow layer right, so okay now that is set up we need to import our masks for each individual layer so to do that if we come to manage and then come on the import the import section you'll see that our layers are here make sure your base layer is selected the edit layer is just to physically edit the landscape the grid above us here um we can we can look at that as a projection onto our landscape a project or onto our landscape we'll see that shortly we're going to import our masks now we're just going to import them from file i know we imported them into our folder but that is because we will use them later in the series and so i'm going to import these this is our base layer mask uh, this is our slope layer mask this is our flow layer mask this is our detail layer mask and our snow layer mask all right so okay what we need to do now this is a bit of an edgy bit uh, we need to make sure this projection pivot point here is lined up with the corner of our landscape looking at this now i can see that it is but for you folks with a little less strained eye what you can do is just bring this down to the corner as close as you can and as you can see my lines line up quite well with that uh, so i'm going to bring this back up to the top like this making sure your landscape base layer is selected we can just hit import give it a moment and there you go our masks are now applied to our landscape as you can see it's picking up slight grays um, for our slope the reason for that is because our base uh, mask is overpowering our slope mask and um, this is not a problem this can be changed but it will be done in a later video we just need to enable our masks to blend together very well as you can see that green is overpowering our detailed mask as well um, are we seeing any black uh, no, no, it's not. Sorry, I'm looking for black. Our detailed mask is blue. And as you can see, we're getting blue bits everywhere. Here, you're getting the yellow from the flow. You're getting the green from the base mask. And the blue is from the uh, detail. And we've got white up here for our snow cap, which is great. You'll still get a little bit of thing here, but this is absolutely perfect because it enables us to blend very well. We still need to blend in uh, certain aspects. As you can see, the slope mask is there, but there needs to be a blend in between. So if I open our landscape material like so, as you can see, it's just a standard straight in color. If I 
reduce the brightness, maybe this may work. Let's just hit that. Click apply. This will reduce. As you can see, it is not uh, having our slope mask come through. I'll tell you what, I will change the color of our slope mask. We'll set this brightness back up. I do prefer it a little bit brighter. Um, the slope, have we got red? I'm going to set this to a red for the slope. And this will just clearly indicate our slopes wherever they are. As you can see there, the tinting has come in. The greens have now gone to a strange orange. Um, but that's what happens if you mix green and red. You get a strange goldy orangey colour. Um, but as you can see, yep, yeah, that is perfect. Yeah, it's just the reason that is happening is because there is how can I say this? There's no slope detection in our uh, landscape material. Uh, but that is for the next video. I think we will maybe slope detection comes in the next video. This video was all about importing our height map. Uh, let's get rid of this to select mode. Our next video was importing our height map and adding our masks to our landscape and that has been very successful. If you have followed this tutorial in detail, you should have a relevantly similar uh, aspect to what I have got now. If you haven't, feel free to join our Discord and come in and say hello and uh, ping me and uh, ask me the question. What's this blue colour? Blue colour is our detail, that's fine. Uh, the reason we got detail in there is because it will break up our texture repetition. Uh, but you'll see that in a couple of videos time. Um, but yeah, no, I'm happy with that. Um, I really do hope this um, tutorial has helped you to provide you with a decent landscape with your mask supplied. Um, if it has done, then don't hesitate to hit subscribe and hit the like button and share this with your friends. It should work. Um, I'm not sure what the next video is going to be, um, but it will be uh, next week now. Just looking. We do need to add slope detection and uh, a way to blend our colours together. Obviously, the landscape's not going to stay this colour. Uh, these colours are just to display our layers. And I am getting carried away. Okay, so like I say, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and it was very useful for you. If it was, then please, please like the video and subscribe. And I shall see you in the next video. Thank you.